guess I'll start off by introducing myself. My name is uh, Kyle McCall. I am the coordinator for the Regional Innovation Center here at NORCAT. So we're all here for Entrepreneurship 101. Uh, welcome to NORCAT if this is your first time here at the center. Uh, we're ecstatic about the turnout we have. So thank you for registering and thank you for participating in this program. It should be really exciting. We're really excited to actually have you guys here and, and be doing this. So today, uh, although you know Entrepreneurship 101, we, we advertise it as being this uh, really exciting thing, today's lecture might be a little on the dull side just because like any introduction, uh, like any introductory uh, lecture, we've got to go over the course outline, we've got to go over how it's structured, and uh, we've got to talk a little about why we're doing this. Um, so we're going to talk a little about, or I'm going to be talking a little bit, a little bit about uh, what a regional innovation center is, who we are, what we do, um, how the course is organized, and then we'll get into a little bit about what is entrepreneurship, what makes people uh, entrepreneurs tick, and then the role of community like this. Uh, has in uh, fostering uh, entrepreneurship. So, without further ado, here we go. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> okay, so who are we? NORCAT, a lot of people in uh, the city actually know us as a uh, health and safety uh, training provider. Um, that's great, we want you to know that. That's where we make, uh, that, that's our bread and butter. Um, but we also are Sudbury's Regional Innovation Center. Uh, regional Innovation Centers aren't something that's new. Um, they've been around for a while. They're all over Ontario, okay? Uh, there's one in North Bay, there's one in the Sioux, there's one in Thunder Bay. Um, there's also a lot in all the major centers uh, uh, down south. Um, so, NORCAT, uh, we're a leading private nonprofit organization that empowers our clients, our staff, and our community partners to drive cultural productivity, innovation, and lifelong learning. Deliver our mandate, NORCAT is focused on these three priorities. <sighs> All right, got that out of the way. Um, basically, we're here to help small businesses and entrepreneurs get a start. Um, we do this by being connected with the Ontario Network of, of, of Entrepreneurs. Uh, we also partner with uh, the Regional Business Centre here in uh, Sudbury, as well as uh, a lot of our academic partners, so College Boreal, Cambrian College, and uh, Laurentian. Um, one of our main goals, uh, and this should be go, uh, happening shortly, is to operate a vibrant innovation hub. As you can tell, we already have a couple uh, residents here, but soon we're gonna have an incubator. So that's what we do. So currently, uh, our work to date, uh, we actually work with over 40 small businesses and entrepreneurs in the Sudbury community already. Um, so that's going really well. We're really excited about that. We hope to be getting more. Hopefully some of you guys actually turn into uh, potential clients. Um, we have a long-term residency, uh, residency program, like I mentioned. So if you notice, Best Tech's just down here. Uh, Testman is down the hallway here. Delteon, they're new. They're just down the hallway. Uh, Dura 21, uh, my committee. Hi, Mr. Sutton. Uh, they've all been residents here as well. Um, so those are some of the big, bigger businesses that we work with. So they're not necessarily the entrepreneur or the small business. They're some of the ones that we've been working with for uh, several years now. Um, Again, the startup incubator coming soon to a Rick near you. That'll be upstairs in the upper main, uh, atrium, and we're really excited about that too. We're gonna try and Google this place out a bit, so that's kind of cool. Um, some of you may have heard of and or attended some of our monthly Hot Topics events. Uh, so these are events where we get uh, eminent speakers from around not just Ontario, but Canada and actually the United States as well, um, to come up here and talk about entrepreneurship, talk about uh, different uh, subjects. And then we also have peer-to-peer -peer events where uh, some of our business leaders can actually get together and network and talk about uh, problems that, are th that they currently face. Uh, what's next here? So the services that NORCAT offers to entrepreneurs and small businesses, uh, we offer mentor, mentorship services. This is actually one of the bigger draws we've, we've discovered. A lot of people here in Sudbury are actually really just looking for some advice. Uh, so we're more than happy to offer that. Entrepreneurship education, obviously you're all here, you're all participating in that. Uh, it's one of the other services we offer. Market research, so through our partners at Mars, um, who also help us with this program, uh, they also, we also, through them we also have access to uh, market research whole bunch of different reports that our clients can take advantage of. 
talent and HR services, a lot of entrepreneurs, startups, they've never gone through the hiring process. They may have participated on the other end of the table, but to actually be the employer hiring someone is something that might be new to them. So we can help them through that process. Uh, and then also software development, depending on our, our IT team's capacity, we can actually take on software development projects as well as uh, website creation. So that's another service that we offer. Prototype and design, if you've got a product, you want to help, some help designing it, prototyping it, we also do that. Capital services, we're able to connect you with uh, government funding agencies. We have some pools of capital ourselves that we can access. And then we're also uh, working right now to build an angel community here in Sudbury so that we can uh, get going along that. So angel investment, it'll be another topic that is covered uh, eventually uh, with these lectures. Uh, and of course, we have this wonderful facility that you are all now sitting in. Um, you're actually able to rent some of these rooms, some of these things if you have business to do uh, or you want to host an event. Rethink Green was actually just in here la last week. So Rethink Green, I believe they're uh, not another nonprofit here in Sudbury and they're looking to uh, you know, get the whole green movement going here in Sudbury. Uh, other community resources that you can take advantage of. So again, I mentioned the Regional Business Center. Um, they also provide similar seminars. Uh, not a lot of overlap, that's uh, really practical. Uh, Wednesday mornings you can take advantage of it, um, check them out online. Um, also starting in October they will have Bridges to Better Business, this is something they run uh, annually. So that's October 21st to 25th if you're interested in signing up for that. Um, there's a week long list of seminars that you can sign up for, you can sign up for them all, you can sign up for the ones you want, um, it'll be uh, really good to check out. Being in Sudbury, mining being as prevalent as it is, there is the Center for Excellence in Mining Innovation. So if you're here, you've got a mining product or service that you're thinking about, um, they're the people to talk to. Uh, they're usually looking to take research and commercialize it or uh, more developed ideas and com help commercialize it. But uh, definitely a resource worth checking out here in Sudbury. And then of course the different funders here. So the NOHFC, FEDNOR, IRAP, uh, NOHFC, the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund. Uh, corporation and then FedNOR is the federal arm of that and of course IRAP. All right so into the fun stuff. Logistics and course outline. Whew. So as you know if you've uh, checked it out online if you've read the uh, pamphlets and all that other great material that we've been spitting at you for the better part of a month now uh, every Wednesday from 6 to 7 NORCAT will be having this space available for you to come in, sit down, and watch these live web streams. So uh, again, not every lecture will be a person in front of you talking. Uh, there will be about uh, there will be seven other ones where we'll have local entrepreneurs coming in to talk. I'm gonna get that get to that in a little bit. The rest will actually be live streamed from Mars, not the planet. <laughs> Yeah, Mars uh, Discovery District, downtown Toronto. We like to think of them as the mother Rick, uh, continuing with the alien analogy. Um, we get, again, a lot of programs, a lot of services through them. Uh, so we'll be streaming live their speakers because being in Toronto, being a larger urban hub, they get a lot more, not more interesting people, but they get some very interesting people that are definitely worth hearing talk. Um, we'll also be helping uh, get you registered and providing you with the login information. So you've registered here with NORCAT, that's great. We're gonna take it from there. We're gonna get you the login information and uh, as well as access to those live web streams because as I mentioned here at the bottom, attendance is key. Um, to get the certificate at the end of this program, you have to attend 20 of the 30 uh, lectures and you're able to watch them from the comfort of your own home on Wednesday nights. It's just you have to be logged in and then Mars, once you've logged in, can actually track you to see if you've watched it or not. And that way you get your attendance taken. So that's really nice. Um, but we are gonna kind of push you guys to show up here and, and be a part of that. Yeah. Yeah, they'll all be archived. So you'll be able to go and watch them retroactively. Um, where am I here? Do, 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 do. Course communication, so everything you need to know will be on the NORCAT website under the uh, Entrepreneurship Education tab. Um, we'll be updating this regularly with all the information you need as the course progresses. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, you can reach out to me at the Rick Coordinator at NORCAT.org. Uh, you can give me a call here as well. My extension is 223. I imagine, uh, I, I think I've spoken to a number of you already. Um, all I ask is if you're going to email me, so if it ends up in my uh, junk mail filter just by accident, if you put ENT 101 
in the uh, subject line, I'll know what it's about uh, and I'll, uh, I'll uh, process it accordingly. Um, I just don't want to get, have any emails go unanswered. So this is just a way of keeping track. Um, yeah, and it'll be updated every Tuesday before the lecture. I believe once we get you registered for the Mars, uh, for the Mars, uh, into the Mars program, it's already kind of part of the Mars program, but you'll be getting a uh, newsletter every Monday that'll actually explain who the speaker is going to be that week and what the, the topic uh, is that it's going to be covered. Upstart competition. So this is really neat. This is actually really exciting. Um, it's a business pitch competition, and by participating in this course, you're actually eligible to uh, partake in the competition. Um, again, you have to attend at least 20 lectures. This is stipulated by Mars. Um, and you must fall into one of four categories. So information communication technology, clean tech, advanced manufacturing, mining. We added that because it's Sudbury. Uh, social ventures, life sciences, and healthcare. Um, there are some also stipulations around you can enter a business you've already started, but you can only have received up to 100K in uh, investment and or uh, you've made that um, in sales. Okay, so there are some terms and conditions around entering, but it's really exciting because, because, <laughs> sorry, uh, it's a $5,000 cash prize for the winner. And then you'll also, there's a possibility of being able to compete provincially. So, once every region has gone through this uh, program, the best of the best might actually be selected. We're still working out the, the logistics of it, but you might be able to compete provincially for a larger prize. Uh, so start thinking now. The other reason why I say start thinking now is because if you have a business idea in your head or you're thinking about something right now, as you go through this course, the topics and, and subjects covered will actually help make that idea a little bigger, help uh, flesh it out, and uh, you'll, be better, you'll be better off for it. All right. Course goals. So we have a couple goals uh, for this course. Uh, number one, we want to help accelerate the process of turning your idea into reality. So if you got an idea already, we want to help you get at it faster, grow it bigger, do things better. Um, and then part of that also is providing you with the knowledge and skills necessary to get you started. Um, so that's what this course is all about. Uh, and then we also want to create a community where you're able to express ideas and network with like-minded individuals. So if you look around this room, everyone here is interested in entrepreneurship. There's probably a lot of interesting brains in this room that you could pick about entrepreneurship, bounce some ideas off of them, maybe, hey, make a connection, go have a coffee or something. Um, but we want to really help foster this community uh, and put entrepreneurship on everyone's kind of mind. So by showing up to these live lectures, we're, we're continuing to build that community, which is really good. And then finally, this is kind of uh, our own goal, is we want to meet and exceed your expectations uh, of this course. And then of course, we want to make NORCAT ambassadors out of you. So hopefully when you leave after a couple of these lectures, you go, these are great. Everyone should know about it. Everyone should be attending. Anyone who's thinking about business, this is for them. Okay. And the course outline, 23 lectures on key topics related to starting and growing a business. Um, so the handout that you all got on the back of it, if you look at it, um, it has the whole schedule of the topics and things uh, and all the lectures and tentatively what, what it looks like. Um, the three lived it and the four meet the entrepreneurs, those would be in-person lectures given by local entrepreneurs here in Sudbury. So those will be, uh, uh, those will be really interesting because again, these will be community leaders people you might recognize, and they all have really neat stories to tell. Uh, I've already mentioned the Upstart competition. Uh, the Live Didn't Meet the uh, Entrepreneurs, again, in-person lectures given by local entrepreneurs. You must attend all these live Live Didn't lectures. This is something we're gonna be a little more uh, stringent or strict about, um, just because we think there's a lot of value into uh, in participating in those lectures, uh, and you can learn a lot from these people who have been there and done that. So again, it's really quite the resource. Uh, please note the following dates. So if you got a pencil or something, just, uh, just circle these dates real quick because these are when they're going to be. Um, they're pretty spread out, so you, you can schedule accordingly. Again, we're willing to accommodate everything and the lectures will be posted online af after the fact. Um, so hopefully you can all make it. We are willing to accommodate. 
we're not going to say just because you didn't attend one because you were sick or something, you won't get your certificate. You can't participate in the uh, upstart competition. We're just really hoping that you show up because these speakers, again, are uh, really interesting people and they've got a lot to share. And our first Lived It lecture will actually be next Wednesday. So right off the bat, you've got a Lived It lecture. Um, it will feature one of our mentors, a great guy, Tom Fortin. Uh, he is the CEO, founder of OnTrack Control Systems. He's got a really neat story to tell. He's really passionate about what he does. Uh, so hopefully everyone here can make it for that. Course organization and topics. Okay, now we're getting into the meat of it. So the first chunk, if you notice on the, on the schedule, will be about beginning your journey. So starting up, getting a business plan together. Uh, then we'll move on to business modeling, uh, marketing, management, and money. Everyone's favorite thing. So a little bit of what's going to be covered under the beginning of the journey. So finding, validating your idea. So you might have a great idea. Does anyone want to pay you for it? So validating that there's actually a demand for it. Uh, we'll talk about the different types of entrepreneurship, whether you want to be a social entrepreneur uh, or you just want to be for profit, those different types. Um, the entrepreneurial ecosystem and legal fundamentals. I actually going to touch a little bit on the ecosystem a little later on. Um, but the legal fundamentals, a lot of people just think they've got a great idea, they want to start this business, and they go, oh, okay, now what? And all of a sudden they get caught up with the legal stuff because you know what, it takes a little more than just an idea to get going. You need to go register your business, you need to do all these other things. If you've got employees you've got to take care of, there's a whole bunch of legal issues involved with that. So this, uh, that subject, uh, or sorry, that lecture will uh, deal with those, uh, those topics. Uh, intro to entrepreneurial, man entrepreneurial management. God, that word is so hard to say, entrepreneurial. Um, uh, value propositions. Kind of similar to uh, finding and validating your idea. So once you have a business, you validated it, but how are you going to value it? So if you go to and you go and pitch to a venture capitalist or an angel investor, and you say, "I think my business is worth 10 million," and they say it's only worth 1 million, well, where did that gap occur? So making sure that you're evaluating your business uh, appropriately, we'll put it that way. And then finally, product development. You're building a consumer product, software, app, widget, whatever you want to call it. Um, how do you go about developing that? How do you test it? How many different iterations of testing should you go through before you take it to market? All those uh, uh, things will be covered. Uh, business modeling, IP management. When I say IP, how many people think patent? Show of hands. How many people think patent? Only a few? OK, good, because there are a whole bunch of different types. A lot of people, they think patent right off the bat. Um, but that also covers copyright, trade secrets, a uh, whole bunch of different ways to protect that your intellectual property that a lot of people don't realize. Uh, and then when, they're, when they should be applied and when they shouldn't be applied. So having a patent is a lot different than a trade secret. Coke, their recipe for their drink, is a trade secret. If they went and patented it, they would have to give out all the quantities and all the ingredients. So you can see how the difference is. Right? Uh, business models, nonprofit versus for profit and then all the nuances uh, that come with those. Um, and then business plans and other communication tools. Do I need an 80-page business plan, or do I need a five-page uh, five business plan and just get at it? Okay, so these are things that uh, will be covered as well. Things to consider. Marketing. I actually enjoy marketing. Marketing's fun. So market analysis. You've got this idea. You want to take it to market. How big is my market? Okay, that'll pl that plays a role in uh, evaluating uh, valuing your company as well. So the size of the market dictates, you know, eventually how much money you can make. Um, marketing communications, am I going to use social media? Am I going to have a social media campaign? Am I going to advertise in papers and all those other kinds of things? Uh, so that will be covered as well. Your go-to market strategy. So once you've done it, once you've, had, uh, you've done all those advertising and things, how are you actually going to take that product or that widget or whatever you've come up with to market? Sales, how are you going to make sales? How are you going to track sales? Uh, talk about different um, uh, customer relation uh, tools. So what kind of software should I even be using to track my sales? Those kinds of things. Uh, negotiations and distribution. So uh, negotiations more so along the lines of um, I'm working business, uh, business to business solutions. So how do I enter, those, uh, enter into those negotiations? And uh, similar vein distribution. So I'm, I've got this product. 
I want to take it to a box store, I want to have it on the shelves at that place, how do I get into that discussion? How should I deal with these, you know, uh, bigger heavy hitters? So, you know, you don't get squashed or your, your product doesn't get uh, taken away from you. Management. Board governance, financial planning, recruiting, building and managing a team. This is important. A lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs, they get that idea, they get so caught up in their idea, they think it's the greatest thing, they forget that, you know what, I need a great team around me as well to make this thing happen. Um, so that's something that often gets uh, neglected and we're going to make sure that you know not to, not to neglect that. Um, also when it comes to a, having a board and governance structure, um, what does a volunteer board look like? What does a uh, shareholder kind of board look like? And those different models. Money and funding your business. All right, so this is, this is, uh, this is always fun. So bootstrapping, if you're not familiar with bootstrapping, it's basically I'm going to fund my own company. I'm going to fund my way through it. So I'm going to take out a loan. I'm going to take out a line of credit. I'm going to do it all myself for at least the first bit as long as you can survive on that. Um, terms of investment. So you've bootstrapped. You've gotten your product to where you wanted to be or your business to where you wanted to be. I'm now approaching angel investors. I'm now approaching venture capitalists. How do I go about that? And what kind of the term should I be setting? Uh, and then also the pitch and raising from VCs and angels. The pitch is huge. We find a lot, of, a lot of times people have a great idea, they're really excited about it, but all of a sudden they lose you in the pitch. They're not very good at communicating that, you know, th I've got 30 seconds in an elevator with someone, I need to pitch to them my idea. What does that pitch sound like? What does it look like? And what information do I put in that pitch so that I'm making the best impact I can? Um, again, that's a learned skill. That's something that, needs a, that, that takes a lot of practice. But it pays off eventually if you get that VC or angel money. Uh, when I say angels, are people familiar with uh, angel investing? Yeah? Okay, so it's kind of smaller sums of money with, uh, I don't want to say lighter terms on ter in terms of investment and those kinds of things, but it's a softer side of venture capital if I can make that connection. All right, so now we're kind of into the uh, actual lecture portion of this. I'm going to do my best. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm a little younger. Entrepreneurship is something I'm kind of new to. Um, but having said that, we can always start with definitions. <laughs> uh, so entrepreneurship is defined as individuals identifying opportunities to allocate resources and create value through the identification of unmet needs or opportunities. Um, social entrepreneurship, similar thing, only you want to make a social change. So uh, that might also be nonprofit. Um, Put a little more simply, the purpose of business is to find and serve customers profitably, ideally. Uh, again, unless it, that changes a little bit if you're a social uh, entrepreneur, but ideally that's what you're looking to do. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit why entrepreneurship matters, and I've got a uh, three or four minute video for you guys. It's from the Kauffman Foundation. Uh, check them out online. They've got all sorts of great materials. and. Uh, and uh, videos that you can watch. They're really, uh, they're really fun, and you can see this one now. Hopefully this works. Entrepreneurs do three things. They birth the new in a simple way. That is to say, every type of innovation we have has largely come from people thinking innovatively, and most of them come from firms that were created to bring forth this new technology that the inventor entrepreneur thought up. The second thing they do is even much more important, and that is when new firms are started, they create jobs. This is actually quite apparent, but economists and policymakers and politicians don't get this. You know, if you're running General Electric or General Motors, your stockholders want higher productivity. They want more product coming out for less expense. It's a simple equation. It's the amount of product divided by the number of people who work in the company. And if you're the president of one of those companies, your job is to drive that number on the denominator down. You want fewer people. Well, if you start a brand new company and you're going to make something, you're going to deliver a service or a product, you got to have people. So you don't want to have more employees than necessary. But without employees, you've got nothing. So new firms hire. And in fact, the statistics from the Kauffman Foundation tell us that new firms are the place where all new hiring takes place, the net job creation. And it's not a small number. 
on average, new firms in the United States create about 3 million jobs a year. In fact, at the margin, that is where all the jobs are that are created in the economy that are, that are new, it's new firms that do it. Put differently, the United States, unlike a lot of countries, has a growing population, has a growing labor force. We need 3 million brand new jobs every year. That's if everybody else kept their job. With the entry of young people, with the coming of immigrants, with people returning to the labor market, we need 3 million new jobs every year. And those jobs are the vast preponderance. Almost all of them come in firms that are less than five years old. Now the third thing that entrepreneurs do with their new companies is they create all the new net wealth in the society. So if we didn't have new companies, the society would gradually grow in relative terms poorer. Now we think about entrepreneurs as actually sometimes becoming very rich. We have in mind Steve Jobs or Bill Gates or Sergey Brin. These guys get very, very wealthy. But in fact, the real wealth goes into the society. It's estimated that the people who start these firms take a fraction in some cases less than a percent of all the new net wealth that their companies generate for the society. Think about what Bill Gates did with Microsoft. Now he made a fortune for himself, tens of billions of dollars, but he's made every one of us richer in economic terms. We are all much better off. So these are all the things that entrepreneurs do. They keep pushing the innovative, they push the new, they make jobs for people, and they make wealth for the society. America and the world will, as long as human beings walk this planet, need innovators, need inventors, need entrepreneurs. So in a nutshell, that's kind of why entrepreneurship matters. That's why we offer this course, because it's a main driver of economic uh, uh, activity here in uh, not just America, in Canada. So these are some Canadian stats I'm going to throw at you now. Um, as mentioned in the, in the video, the majority of new jobs in the modern econo economy are created by firms that are less than five years old. Um, so about uh, four to ten percent of every, uh, four to ten percent of all the startups in Canada actually go on to be high growth firms. It's not a big number, obviously, um, but from that four to ten percent, about a million jobs in Canada are created every year. So it's a huge driver of economic, uh, oh my goodness, what's that word? Economic activity. Um, which accounts for about 48% of the workforce, which is huge. Now, if you can get 4 to 10% up to 10, 15%, 15 to 30%, something around those lines, you can imagine what these numbers all of a sudden become. So that's why this course is really important because we want to, again, get more people thinking entrepreneurially. Um, whether it's entrepreneurial, uh, whether or not you're also an entrepreneur, which means you're kind of innovating within a company too, because companies need those as well. So, who, entre who are entrepreneurs and what makes them tick? Uh, a lot of people think crazy, eccentric, uh, huge risk takers, these uh, people who have you know, given their lives or they're megalomaniacs, they want their bipolar like Steve Jobs if you've read his biography. They're crazy people. Turns out that's not really the case. Those are just the examples that get thrown around in the media. Um, but really what makes them tick is they're people who recognize opportunities. Um, so if you sit down in a restaurant, you sit down in another business and you start looking around and you go, you know what, this could be done differently, this could be done that way, this could be done uh, better. Those are the kind of people. Uh, have an eye for design. Again, I'm going to use the Steve Jobs uh, example. But these are people who are always looking to redesign something better. Um, they're good at managing risk. They're not risk takers. They're also not opposed, they're, not also, they're also not risk adverse. What they are is they're better at managing risk. So they might take a few more extra risks than you or me might take, but they're better at managing, ma managing it. So they can live with it. They're also resilient. So uh, some American entrepreneurs will start up, or some Canadian entrepreneurs will start up two or three, four businesses and fail almost you know, one or two times. But the important thing is that they pick themselves up and they keep going at it. They don't give up. They want to follow their dreams. And then finally, an effectuating mind. Now, when I read this, I didn't really know what that meant. But after having done some uh, digging, it means they're doers. They have an effect on people. So they're action-oriented. So not, it's not good enough for them just to put a whole bunch of things on paper and say, I've got a business. They actually want to go out and do it. Um, 
And then also a big part of being an entrepreneur or being a CEO or a founder of a company is being able to motivate your employees. So that's where that effectuating mind comes in as well. Can you learn entrepreneurship? I guess that's why we're all here, right? Now, but this is a really big question. Can you teach people to have those kinds of uh, personality traits, I guess? Um, we like to say you can teach the skills, you can teach the theory, and you can even teach accounting. So you can teach all the fundamentals, the basics that come along with running a business. But what you can't teach is drive. And that's where entrepreneurs kind of set themselves apart from everyone else. I mean, that old saying where you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink, that kind of thing. So you can take everything you want in, but unless you're motivated and you're driven to do something, you know, uh, that's what really what makes the entrepreneurs stand apart. So what's your motivation? Do you want to make money? Who wants to make money? Who thinks? Entrepreneur? Yeah. yeah, everyone, if you're entrepreneurial, you think you want to make money. Do you want to have an impact? Do you want to change the world in some way? Or are you just after the experience? Do you just think it'd be fun to create something, to watch, to build something, to be a part of that thing that you built? Well, it turns out that if you ask entrepreneurs, Close to 60% or two thirds of them will actually identify as being impacted by, uh, sorry, motivated by making an impact. Whether or not they want to change the whole world or they just want to change a little part of it. They're excited about making an impact. Uh, roughly 25% then are also motivated by the experience. This could be serial entrepreneurs. These, these could be people who are, you know, I love playing with Legos as a kid. So I really like building things. This is uh, that person. They really like building things. They want to have that experience, that creative process of actually build, bringing a, a, a business together. And then finally, the remaining 8% say they're motivated by money. But I imagine mixed in here somewhere, they would all identify with that somewhere. It's just, it's not as high on the list. So, the role of community. So what comes to mind when I say ecosystem? Anyone want to take a shot? I say ecosystem. Interconnected. Interconnected. Okay, that's a good word. Sustainable system. Sustainable system. That's great, actually. I really like that one. Anyone else? I get pictures of nature. Yeah. Not creating an yeah, not creating an imbalance. So when I say ecosystem, perhaps something like this a food web, okay, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, there's really no way of describing an ecosystem without actually saying ecosystem. But uh, uh, you could think about feedback loops, you can think about nutrient cycles, you can think about all these animals coexisting in one area, all right? Um, predators, too. predators, yeah, predators too. Uh, competition, obviously, if you're in the business, you're entering a market, there's always going to be competition. Um, so, just to expand on this idea, I've got another little video, um, but I want you to. Continue to think about the ecosystem part of this, okay? I'm Brad Feld, a partner at Foundry Group, the venture capital firm in Boulder, Colorado. If you go back to the industrial era, everything ran in a hierarchy. Businesses had a boss and people worked for the boss and you worked your way up the hierarchy. As we evolve from industrial society to information society, we start to see some changes. In entrepreneurship, especially at the very early stages, there is no hierarchy. But if the hierarchy tries to drive the startup community, it essentially stifles it. The hierarchy is really collapsing, and many, many, many more aspects of what we do are behaving as a network. This was the starting point for thinking about how startup communities evolve. What I came to was, a thesis that I call the Boulder Thesis that has four parts, and those four parts are essential for a sustainable, vibrant startup community anywhere in the world. First, it has to be led by entrepreneurs. I define the universe into two categories of people, leaders and feeders. The leaders in this context are entrepreneurs, and the feeders are everyone else that participates in the startup community, university, government venture capital investors, angel investors, service providers, lawyers, accountants, etc. The feeders have very important roles. They become part of the fabric of the startup community, but the feeders can't be leaders. The leaders have to be entrepreneurs. 
Second is entrepreneurs have to take a very long-term view. It's a generational view, 20 plus years. Huh? It's people who are making a long-term commitment to invest heavily in the development of their startup community. The right cliche is that you're running a marathon, not a sprint. In a startup community over a long period of time, you're going to have some extraordinary successes as well as some really huge failures. When somebody's incredibly successful, that person is still part of that startup community. When somebody's a failure, have a wake, move on, reincorporate them into other things. You're essentially saying it's okay. It's just part of the process. Third is you have to have a philosophy of inclusiveness. It's not just other entrepreneurs, but anybody who's interested in being part of this startup ecosystem. If everybody contributes energy into the startup community, it'll get bigger and grow faster and be more successful and be more fun. And the fourth is you have to have activities and events that engage the entire entrepreneurial stack. Those activities and events need to be more substantive than an award dinner or a cocktail party. They have to be things like an accelerator program like Techstars that engages the entire community in helping a set of startups get going. Or something like Startup Weekend that's essentially a simulation of entrepreneurship. So those four pieces are essential for the long-term health of a startup community. It's just this sort of network chaos of entrepreneurs doing what entrepreneurs do which is create things. That force of the entrepreneurs to build something bigger than just themselves and their company is so incredibly powerful. So you can kind of see where we're going with this community thing and having Entrepreneurship 101 uh, here at NORCAT. Because again, we want to build this community. Whether or not you're a leader or you're a feeder and you fall into those categories, we still want to interact and make sure everyone has a, a spot in that community and the community. So getting back to the entrepreneurial ecosystem, um, in this sense, it's used as a metaphor uh, to describe the environment a business finds itself in and or has decided to move into. So if you think about business as an organism and growing that organism, um, what components, what nutrients essentially does it need to grow? Um, again, as uh, the video points out, you know, you need venture capital, you need government programs, you need angel investors, you need banks, you need lawyers, you need universities, you need all these other things um, for the entrepreneurial ecosystem to work. So hopefully, everyone here is, falls into somewhere there or you're a part of it. Um, so having said that, ooh, come on, and you, <laughs> so you're now part of the community. Um, and with that, I'd like to actually say, oh my goodness, I wish this could have been better. Welcome to the ecosystem and welcome to Entrepreneurship 101. Um, again, everything you need about this program can be found at norcat.org. You can check us out on Facebook or follow us on Twitter for regular updates.